Uh, I'm Richard Sampson. I'm working at Rikyo University in Japan. And I'm Richard Pinner. I work at Sophia University in Japan. And uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about our new book with Multilingual Matters with the very long title of Complexity Perspectives on Researching Language Learner and Teacher Psychology. <laughs> yes, it's it's quite a mouthful, but it, we hope that a lot of people would find it interesting um, because it's to do with psychology and complexity. Uh, I feel really awkward now that we're recording this. We've, we've <laughs> totally decided what to say, and now it's like we don't know. What What is complexity, Richard? <laughs> Good question, Richard. Uh, so, yeah, it might be good to start with uh, a bit of an introduction about complexity. So perhaps the most straightforward way to introduce complexity is as a fabric of elements woven together. Um, we can see a pattern as we look at the fabric as a whole, which is made up of the interactions between different threads. However, it's, it's not a static pattern. Um, the elements in this fabric adapt to each other through their interactions over time. So in complexity, it's through the co-adaptive interactions of elements that novel emergent phenomena arise. So this is the pattern of the fabric. The underlying concept behind complexity perspectives is that certain phenomena are by their nature so dependent on these interactions uh, of the constituent parts that they're basically impossible to predict. And in fact, much of our thinking is guided by a kind of mechanistic simplicity. The idea that we can understand something by separating and reducing, and that we can generalize and predict based on understandings of just the parts. In contrast, complexity thinking encourages us to understand that it's nonsensical to look at the, the parts on their own uh, in isolation, out of time and context. We need to look at the parts and the whole in interaction over time in specific contexts. What, well, the connection between complexity and practitioner research um, is a really good question because what inspired us with this with this volume and what kind of brought us together was um, a little bit of a dissatisfaction with a lot of the complexity research that we were looking at. We we had adopted complexity research for our uh, doctoral theses and and we'd used a kind of complexity thinking approach to doing our research ourselves. And both of us did practitioner research uh, for our PhD. But yeah, a lot of the um, a lot of the articles and the new research that I was that we were seeing that was coming out uh, was, to be honest, uh, complicated and very un inaccessible, and looked like it was using computer models and equations, and uh, it didn't look particularly like it was research on humans or language teaching. It, it looked like something from a journal of computer sciences. Uh, not all of it, obviously, but you know there was a trend to be very technical within within these tech complexity articles. And yet, you know, Richard and I, we we both were quite certain that we had read in in all the things we'd read about complexity. We had read that it that what was needed to use complexity approaches as a research method was people on the ground doing the teaching, going into the classrooms, talking to real people, more qualitative approaches, and more practitioner research. Essentially, it's explicitly stated in a lot of the articles, you know, promoting complexity as a, as a research method. And so we were kind of like, mm, seems to be a bit of a mismatch here between what, what is being said is needed and what's actually being done. So we thought maybe we could humbly bridge that gap a little bit and that's why we got together and that's how the book came about isn't it 
Yeah, I, I mean, I clearly remember that uh, symposium in Toyama in Japan, and we went to, and we, we, you actually pulled out of your bag an article and showed me these absolutely horrendous diagrams and uh, and graphs and uh, and this was complexity research and we both thought well you know that doesn't look like any human being i've ever seen <laughs> and um we wanted to to try and encourage more more research with a human face and that's what we think complexity should be about really yeah exactly uh, so you know, I, I remember us talking at that uh, symposium in Toyama and vaguely saying, well, sometime, you know, let's try and uh, have some kind of event that combines complexity with practitioner perspectives uh, with L2 psychology. And we kind of left it at that for a while, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, you 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 basically asked me if I'd be interested, and you I think you said you asked me, "Are you a complexity person?" <laughs> uh, to which I responded, "I might be." <laughs> Sorry about my my vague question there. <laughs> <laughs> but then that the the opportunity for this proposed event um, came about quite naturally and quite quite soon didn't it with uh pll3 coming to tokyo which was accessible to both of us and then you suggested that we propose a symposium and i thought wow because i'd never actually done a symposium until then uh and i and i knew that they were competitive and i and i thought yeah we'll be doing really well if we get our symposium accepted in this big conference like PLL3 with all these big names coming in who know loads about psychology and you know we'll be competing with lots of proposals and we were accepted yeah it was it was nice wasn't it and it was a, it was a lovely conference we had to once we were accepted we had to scramble a bit to get get it into shape really yeah uh, and we got together with some some other wonderful presenters uh joe fallett and tomoko yashima yep who have uh, chapters in the book of course yeah and um but they didn't want to edit it with us <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they'd had enough by then <laughs> um and the the symposium was very well attended and went off quite well and um before the symposium, we'd had some people suggest to us, you know, why don't you do a book on the back of this symposium? And uh, again, like Richard just said about even organizing a symposium, we'd both not had any experience with editing books. So we thought, okay, why not? And um, well, I didn't want to do it on my own. So Richard very kindly agreed to, to join me. And um, it was my pleasure, Richard, <laughs> as you know. And um, we put out a call for proposals at the end of our symposium, and then also contacted some people who we thought we might thought might be interested. And actually, there was a very positive reception to it, wasn't there, Richard? Yes, quite. I mean, I don't know if I should say it was surprising or not. I mean, it wasn't surprising that there was a positive reaction to the call for proposals because it was kind of like affirming what we already knew that people doing complexity research felt there needed to be, um, you know, this emphasis on on how to do it, uh, what the methodologies used are, how to personalize it, and uh, you know trying to emphasize the the kind of what actually happens when you do the research we our brief was that we wanted a narrative of how you've done some research not a new study not a study that's got all the results we we wanted to deprioritize the emphasis on results and you know graphs and things that that were complicated for new people people new to the research method uh, we just wanted a kind of uh, how to or how I did this or how, you know, what the story of the m methods was. 
Um, and people were saying, yeah, that, that sounds really good. And they, they wanted to be part of it. And we got some big names, didn't we? That was the surprising part, that big names would, would want to be edited by us. Yeah, and uh, some of them were, not some of them, all of them were, were very, very positive about it. You know, I can can clearly remember various people saying, you know, it's it's high time for a book like this. Uh, and I think that's something that's that's special about this book is that maybe we've even written this in in the introduction um, that it it takes you behind the the magic cloak. Uh, it it allows you to see how people are doing complexity research. You know, instead of being a how-to book, it kind of takes you along as people do complexity research. You know, so through their narratives, we can we can understand uh, lots of you know little instances of how this changed the trajectory of somebody's research uh, and interesting things like that. Uh, but we hope that you might be interested in the book because you're a practitioner or a researcher who wants to do complexity research but with an with a focus on the human side of the people you're researching working with them uh, rather than on them